Today I'm in the north of Italy in Trentino Alto Adige. This hidden gem Trentino Alto Adige is a unique region in northern Italy that borders both with Switzerland and Austria. 8,000 meters above sea level and home to the Dolomite Mountains. It really is like a piece of Switzerland tucked away in Italy. I've never been around this area and I have to say I really like the alpine look. You know, wherever you see there are little villages hidden in the mountain, castles behind the tree. I'm really enjoying it here. It looks like a fairy tale. This is the furthest north I've ever been in Italy and it feels like a million miles away from where I grew up in Napoli. As a chef, what interests me is how the location of the region defines the produce, the architecture and its traditions. The culinary heritage here revolves around the local food markets where farmers sell their products. So it's clear to me, if I want to uncover the secrets of Trentino Alto Adige, then that's what I will need to do. So I'm starting in Val Floriana, where dairy and meat farmers still follow ancient methods of producing food. And I'm meeting dairy farmer Graziano, who's decided the best way to learn is on the job. Making the local soft cheese, Zighera della Val Floria. I'm quite excited, and apparently one of the girls here, she's a beauty queen. So you are the beauty queen. It's not what I was expecting. She's very beautiful. Bella, 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 bella. These alpine grey cows have grazed on this land for centuries, and I'm keen to find out more about them. Graziano, what makes the milk of this cow so special? Speciali dal colore grigio che fanno un latte fantastico. I just said nothing more than the grass that they eat. That's what makes their milk and of course their cheese, very, very special. Sono molto belle, eh? Sì, sì. Sono veramente belle. Sono le regine della montagna. Eh? He calls them the queen of the mountains. Oh, le mangiamo? Sì, dai. I want to milk them. I want to milk them. Watch and learn. Uno, due, tre. Uno, due, tre. Graziano really has a rhythm, but I'm struggling, to be honest. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It only takes between four to five minutes to milk the cow, which will give as much as 25 liters of milk. One, one two, two, one, one. Mama, one. one is not coming out. One. So thanks mostly to Graziano. Five minutes later, we got the milk. Let's go make some cheese. Come on. Now, I'm the Graziano's watchful eye. I'm ready to learn how the whole process comes together. First, the milk must be churned to turn it into curd. We put the milk in there, we take it to temperature to 37 degrees, and then we just have to churn the milk for about half an hour. Every last drop. At this point, the curd is gonna be cut by what he explained to me. This is called a guitar. Huh? A guitar. So he makes a, a, a cross, and then he's gonna break into little pieces. I asked him what kind of uh, technique is this. He said it's a, it's a tradition from his grandfather and great-grandfather. He said the only thing you need to learn, making cheese is like a relationship to a woman. You must be patient. And I do agree, actually. Bravo, <laughs> bravo. This is not pasteurized milk. This is fresh milk. And he was saying to me, you will realize because of the texture and because of the smell. Graziano is right. It really does smell like the flowers of the mountain. Relaxing, eh? <laughs> Cheese has been there for another 20 minutes to make sure that you're all nice and tasty and coagulated. Now is the time to put it in the basket. Bye, via, via, via. Dove va qua? Sotto. Find my trousers. One more. Okay. Okay. It's hot, eh? The milk at this point is 47 degrees. So you need to fill it up as much as you can and put pressure because then all the water goes away. Graziano seems determined to ruin my trousers. 
but it's a small price to pay for learning the secrets of this very special cheese. So one of the most important things is he said at this stage is to work very quickly because if the cheese gets cold, it's not gonna have the same flavor at the end. Okay? Okay. I'm so excited to try this. This is gonna be amazing. Good. Oh, ma sei bravissimo, eh? <laughs> it looks like Graziano is happy with my efforts. After all that hard work, it's finally my chance to taste the finished product. After 20 days, this is exactly what you're gonna get. Lo apriamo? Lo apriamo. Let's open it. I'm gonna get a slice. Okay. Look at that. Nice and soft. What I like about this cheese is all the little holes still in there. Il giallo. So, giallo. Nice and yellow. Salute. See, let me try. After all the work. Mm. Sweet. A, a little seasoning with salt which really comes through. E sai cosa anche? Che cos'è? Ascolta. Si sente la musica dei campanelli. Dei campanelli. Vero? <laughs> What I've just said, said if you put it next to your ears, you can actually hear the bells of the cow. Graziano then wanted me to try his thyme-infused soft cheese. I absolutely love cheese with herbs. Same texture inside with the little holes. You can see, of course, inside and outside all the, the, the dry thyme. That's a jam one. Okay, let me see. There you go. Salute. Mmm. Oh, yeah. È un altro livello. Qui eh? andiamo sulle dolomiti, in cima, mm. sulla cima. Graziano was saying, you're going on the top of the Dolomites mountain because that's where the time comes from and it's exquisite, really fantastic. Vi posso prendere un pezzo per cucinare? No. Sì. I just asked if I can have a piece to cook and he said, yes, I'm going to run before he changes his mind. Ciao. <laughs> Now I've got the cacciotta al timo cheese. It's my turn to show Graziano what I do for a living. I got Graziano's cheese with the herb and I promised him that in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna cook him something really special. I worked very hard all day, so I'm gonna have to make sure that this is gonna jump off the plate like there is no tomorrow. So I'm gonna prepare a nice pasta with tomato sauce, speck and Graziano's herb cheese. Now, the first thing I want to do that is the rind of the speck that I want to get rid of it because it's quite tough. So, sharp knife and make sure you take it out. Just like that. Okay? Speck is the local cured meat, but you can also use pancetta. You'll need about 80 grams of it, cut into small strips. Then put four tablespoons of olive oil into a hot pan, followed by the speck. Now, this is exactly what I wanted to hear. Listen to the sizzle. Then add two garlic cloves, roughly chopped. Add in 400 grams of chopped tomatoes. This is starting to smell fantastic. Now, the last thing I'm going to pour into my sauce, I got some local basil. I just went to foraging around here. Look what I found. Look at that. How sexy is this? You know, I'm going to put a little bit of basil leaves. Black pepper. Now I'm going to share one of my family secrets. Often you go leftover lasagna sheets, and what do you do? Very simple, you put them up like that, and I'm going to show you a tip that my grandfather told me. Never to waste anything. Slice the lasagna sheets into roughly centimeter wide strips. You just made your own fresh tagliatelle. Then throw straight into a pot of boiling water, adding a tablespoon of salt. Fresh pasta usually takes a bath five to six minutes. Remember, like a true Italian, like a proper traditional preto pasta, you want it nice and al dente. As a finishing touch, add some olive oil to the sauce to make it look and taste fantastico. Then, using a large hold grater, shred 300 grams of the cacciotta al timo cheese. A good alternative to this is cheddar. I can see Graziano is coming my way. Okay, I'm nearly there. So, half of the cheese goes straight into the sauce. Okay, pasta is ready. I'm just gonna pick it up straight into the sauce. That's the best way to do it. I'm 
of the big portion because it's two men eating. Now the last thing that you have to do, remember, Graziano cheese is on top. Uh, that's how it. Eh? Can I fancy? It looks like the mountain here when the snow goes on. Sembra la montagna quando la neve va sopra. Con la neve in cima. Eh, con la neve in cima. I want him to be honest with me because this is, you know, we worked hard for this cheese, so I want to make sure that he's happy. Tanti fanno le cose elaborate, le cose sofisticate. He said, Gino, what you done? You used my ingredients in a very simple way. So you can't do show off what the mountain life and mountain ingredients are. Simple, tasty, getting a bit emotional. Simple, tasty, and just amazing. So, uh, grazie. Grazie. Thank grazie. you. Grazie. So it looks like my cheese making was a success. Now I can't wait to see what else Trentino has in store. I'm exploring Italy as the locals know it seeking out its hidden gems. And it's really a new experience for me, as I'm the furthest north I've ever been in Italy. As a chef, I'm traveling through it to uncover how the very location of Trentino Alto Adige defines the food it produces. Here, in this beautiful mountainous region, everything is grown in these rugged surroundings and sold locally. There is no time for me to sit on my bum. I got another job to do. Without doubt, the most important produce that comes out of this region is speck, or cured meat. Dating back to the 1800s, the word speck is trademarked and Trentino Alto Adige is the only region in Italy licensed to call it this. This family-run farm shop is high up in the hills of Cavalese. They also sell this highly priced meat by traveling down into the villages, going from market to market. I'm hoping that if I make myself useful, they'll tell me what the secret is to Speck's success. Ah, Cesare, you are the king of Speck. Yes, I am. Tell me everything I should know about Speck. Speck is, the, is our most traditional product. The recipe is a secret. What do you mean a secret? I'm here, I want to know the secrets. <laughs> you have to work for us if you want to know the secret. Okay. We use it in many ways. We cook with it, we eat it raw, we slice it very thin. So it is a little bit like smoked pancetta, right? Pancetta has more fat. So tell me, if I was the pig, which part of my body would it come from? Just from the thigh. Here. Ah, so the thigh yes. or the pig. So this is what this is what it is. Yes. We can try? Yeah, sure. It smells really, really sweet. Okay, let me try. This for me. Beautiful. Mmm. Not too salty. Definitely you can smell the spices though. It has the right amount of fat and meat. Oh well. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Fantastic. Tell me, tell me, this is incredible. Thank you so much. Where are you going? I told bueno. you, if you want to, to know the secret, you have to work for us. Okay. I'm working for you. Yes. All right. Where am I going? With this thing? So, with the van loaded with spec, I feel like Del Boy on his way to the market. Lovely job. And as arrive in style, Cesare chose to stay some distance behind me. I wonder why. Well, that was embarrassing. So I need to impress with my sales technique. Just watch this. We're selling spec! Well, that was a bit of a lie. I decided the best strategy was to give it away for free. Hey, go, go hey, go. Hello. No one can resist a freebie. Le pancetta. È tutto gratis, eh? Tutto gratis. Sì, sì, sì. No, tutto gratis. It was a risky business, but the free spec went down a storm. You take this. Oh, you take everything for the family, for everybody. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Busy. Eh? Yeah. Busy. I worked for you all morning. I put all the spec in your van. I drive all the way down here. I entertained all your customers. Where is the secret? I want to know the secret of how to make the spec now. You promised. Well, you see, not only you just give away for free my spec, 
you're not from my country, from my region, I, I can't tell you the secret. What do you mean There's you can't? no way. I cannot First tell you First of all, I gave it free because they need to taste it. So they need to know the way it's done and understand everything. So now you're not telling me the recipe? No, no. No way. See, my mother always said to me, never trust a northern Italian one. Never. So now it's back to the day job and I can't wait to show you the next location I'm cooking in. If there is one image that sums up this region, then this is it. So what better place to create my version of this area's iconic desserts? Around here, apples are very, very popular. And one recipe that everybody cook, one dessert, is apple strudel and custard. I know you may think it's a very Bavarian kind of recipe, but trust me, around here, everybody likes their apple strudel. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a no-bake apple strudel with raisins, amaretto liqueur, and a raspberry coolie. And the first thing we're gonna have to deal with is the apple. So very simply, just peel them and chop them up. Okay, so apples, just where they are, straight into a hot pan. You need to make sure you use any firm apples as you don't want them to get mushy. Whenever I go to Italy, everybody uses extra virgin olive oil. Around here, they're crazy about butter. Just a knob, and soon after the butter, I go brown sugar. Just sprinkle it on top, like this. Once you allow the apples to caramelize for two to three minutes, add in a splash of amaretto liqueur and a handful of raisins before cooking for a further 12 to 13 minutes. As soon as the apple get this beautiful curl just like this, okay, cool them down straight away and taste them. Taste them just in case you need to add a little bit more sugar or you need to add a little bit more amaretto liqueur. Mm. Yum, yum. This is perfect. Now I'm going to make little filo parcels. So, filo pastry, the first thing you're gonna have to do, just cut them in half. And we want a piece like this, okay? Okay, this kind of lens, nice and easy. On the chopping boards, so you need three pieces of filo pastry. So one on the bottom, a little bit of melted butter on top. Layer the sheets of pastry, one on top of the other, buttering each one as you go. Now, to be honest with you, there is no golden rule so how many layers of filo pastry you have to use. I'm gonna use only three because we're gonna cook them in the frying pan. So I want to make sure that it's not too much. Now, we got the pastry. What you want to do, pick up some of the apple and raisins, and then you start to make triangles. So, you fold it, like that. Make sure you press down the pastry, otherwise it's gonna get everywhere. Then you fold it again, like this. Then you fold it again like this. And then you fold it again like that. That's it. Happy, happy. Melt another large knob of butter in the frying pan and place the parcels straight in. Then cook for around three minutes on each side until golden brown. Oh yes, these are ready. Now get a little bit of kitchen paper, very important. And lift them up and they go straight into the kitchen paper. Like that. Like this, I can feel them, they're nice and crispy. Now it's time for my finishing touches of cinnamon icing sugar. Prepare by mixing two tablespoons of icing sugar and around a half a teaspoon of cinnamon into a sieve. For the raspberry coolie, very simply what I did, you get fresh raspberries, you put them into a blitzer, a little bit of icing sugar, touch of amaretto liqueur, blitz everything together, put them in a sieve, and this is exactly what you're gonna get. Look. Now, look at this. I'm gonna cut them right through. So crispy outside. And nice, look at those apple and raisin with the amaretto liqueur. These are going to be delicious. So, the way to serve them, very, very simple. Just pile them up and put it for your guests to serve themselves. So one goes here, one goes there. The last two goes on top, open like this. Then I'm going to pour a little bit of cinnamon icing sugar. Just 
shake it all over. Uh, oh, this is looking sexy. And then, not only I'm going to serve it with raspberry sauce, but I like to put a little drizzle of raspberry sauce all over. Ha! Look at that, my no-bake apple strudel served in this hidden paradise. For me, this has been an emotional journey into a part of Italy I've never experienced before. You know, from a chef's point of view, I really appreciate places like this, where, you know, it's not only the grass that gives flavor to the ingredients, but even the flowers and everything that is around this land. It's like putting everything together and a magic trick just happens. And if you ever have the chance, one of my tips would be to you, come here in these hidden places in Italy and enjoy, just the way I'm doing it. Enjoy.